Sure, Senator, good evening. It's nice to have you with us. Lester, it's good to be with you. Thank you for having me. You, you made the choice not to be in the chamber tonight. Uh, why and do you regret it? Well, I, I don't regret it. I think the speech tonight surprised nobody. Uh, it was more of the same. <clears throat> Uh, it, it, it was sadly, I think it was less a state of the union th than it was a state of denial. Uh, President Obama demonstrated just how out of touch he is. He, he told the American people the economy's doing fantastic. I'll tell you, as I travel this country, as I travel the state of New Hampshire, as I travel Ohio, uh, uh, Iowa and South Carolina and across the country, that's not what I'm hearing from the men and women across this country. I'm hearing from young people who are coming out of school with student loans up to their eyeballs and they can't get a job. They're afraid. Am I going to get skills? Am I going to build a future? As I and, hear and from Senator, working men and women, yeah. Yeah, in the speech, uh, I think we all agree that the president essentially called you out on the issue of leadership. And he said, he said the answer <laughs> needs to be more than tough talk or calls to carpet bomb civilians. Uh, in, well, again, well, in the topic of leadership. What was your response to that? Well, listen, I will apologize to nobody for my commitment to kill the terrorists. And this speech, once again, President Obama refused even to say the words radical Islamic terrorism, much less demonstrate any clarity, any vision, any plan to destroy them. He diminished the threat of ISIS. I mean, Lester, think about it. This speech, he didn't say a word about the Paris terror attacks. He didn't say a word about San Bernardino. He didn't say a word about the Philadelphia police officer who was shot 13 times by a terrorist pledging allegiance to ISIS. And, and I think the American people, they're, they're tired of having a president who will not even acknowledge the evil that we're facing, much less do anything serious to stop it. We need a president who will defeat radical Islamic terrorism. And, and, and I think Americans don't understand why President Obama and Hillary Clinton, they, they put their heads in the sand like ostriches rather than acknowledging the threat of jihadists who want to murder us. Let's talk about a national security issue that's going on right now. As you know, 10 U.S. sailors yeah. are in Iranian custody. The U.S. has acknowledged that they uh, make mechanical issues, sail them into Iranian territorial waters. Uh, if the Iranians are true to the word and release those sailors at daylight, will that be a foreign policy win, a diplomatic win for the U.S.? And would that have happened uh, absent uh, the, the relations that led to the nuclear arms agreement? Well, listen, our prayers to tonight are with the sailors, with their families. We hope for their early release. Uh, it was striking in the course of the State of the Union that, that, that President Obama didn't acknowledge that Iran had captured two Navy ships and had 10, 10 sailors apparently as hostages. And, and the fact that that happened in the first place is a direct consequence of the weakness of the Obama-Clinton foreign policy. It's, it's the fact that the Ayatollah Khamenei, like Putin, like tyrants across the world, they do not fear President Obama, they do not respect President Obama. And in my judgment, the single greatest national security threat facing America is the threat of a nuclear Iran. And President Obama's signature foreign policy achievement is sending $150 billion to the Ayatollah Khamenei, a theocratic zealot who chants death to America. So no, it is not a foreign policy victory if Iran releases hostages after taking them. Iran shouldn't be taking American hostages, and they only did so because the American president is so weak and so unwilling to defend this country. 